What's up, family? <laughs> Ooh, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? It's warm in here. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, Max Polly. How are you? Uptown crew. Yes. How's Mary? Hey. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> Good to see your name, Max. Jeremy, are you still here? Did you move yet? Yes. Hey. Come on, Queen Angel. What's up, y'all? My lighting is a little off. I've been working on it all afternoon. <laughs> hey, fam. Hey, Vanna. Yes. Thank you for being here. Friday, happy life. Back and forth, Dallas, New York. Okay, okay. Hope to see you over the summer. Hey, Detroit. <laughs> yes, thank you guys for being here. Of course, as my super starts some construction out my window, of course. As soon as I go live, right? Yes. Come on, love bug. Thank you guys for being here. Of some photos of my guests coming back today. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's my guest with his co artistic director of Torch Dance Theater. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Let's see some more. Hey, Kalia Campbell. Come on, Alvin Ailey. Come on, Alvin Ailey in these streets. Yes, Torch Dance Theater. Hey, Kate. Kalia, I can't wait to see you this summer at Lincoln Center. Yes. It's Kalia Campbell of Alvin Ailey. Hey, Winston Dynamite. <laughs> Yay. So I won't do a terribly long intro, but I want to get right to it. Thank you guys for being here as always. You guys are amazing um, and still watching and <laughs> joining in the fun. But this has been a week. First of all, I have on my Be Kind t-shirt with all my women's fists and hands raised because, you know, hey, <laughs> the uh, Supreme Court. Come on, y'all, Supreme Court. Just, will they stop just trying to run the lives of women? I mean, no one should be one worrying what's going on in anyone's bedrooms, you know, <laughs> Let people live their lives. Let people live their lives. And so, anyway, just wanted to say, you know, stay strong in these streets. Stay safe out here in these streets. And just welcome. And happy early Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers out there. Want to be mommies. Could have been mommies my, like myself. But, you know, life happens. But here we are. So happy early Mother's Day. I'm actually, I didn't sleep at all last night worrying about some things going on with the festival. But, so I'm drinking coffee out of my mug. Ooh, this, lipstick but it says um it's official i've become my mother i've had this mug forever and it's true i am becoming my mom <laughs> and all y'all know how much i love my mom so just really quickly since it is mother's day weekend i just want to throw this picture i love this photo of us this was last summer at city winery on uh 14th street and the highway but it was after my little island performance on um, September 19th last year. And it was actually a week before her birthday. So I surprised her a week early for her birthday um, with birthday cake and all this stuff. And it was really wonderful that she got to see me dance again after all those many years. And yes, Central Park's on stage. So again, happy Mother's Day, early Mother's Day. Um, and also to those who have are sadly spending this Mother's Day without their mommies. Um, my prayers go out to you. I know it never gets easy. So I have several friends right now who are going through this. Very close friends. And so my heart, my prayers and love go out to you guys. Deeply, deeply, deeply. Um, hey, Grace. Um, so yes, Little Island. It's so, it is very cool. It's such a cool spot. So I um, just wanted to say that. And um, my guest today is Mr. Maxwell Louis Waterman. And he was one of the first people that ever, actually the first person to ever reach out via Instagram to say, hey, can I be on your show? 
This was last year, around the same time. And so I was like, sure, you know, checked him out. And uh, yeah, I, I invited him to come on. And we uh, did our episode together April 23rd last year. And now he's back this year and he's done so many things. So without further ado, just give you a little background on Maxwell. He is a, a leader in arts administration, arts education and entertainment, native of Brooklyn, New York, and a descendant of Barbadian heritage. His professional dance training consists of Ailey Extension, Ailey School, Joffrey Ballet. He's performed works by Clifton Brown of Alvin Ailey, Michael Leon Thomas, also formerly of Alvin Ailey, Earl Mosley, the great Ronald K. Brown, Jamal Barnes, Nathaniel Hunt, Anna Noble, Iqbal Johnson, Karen Arsenault, Pat Dye, Dana McBroom Mano, who is actually the honor of my, one of my ex-boyfriends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Martha Graham and Twyla Tharp. After receiving a BS in dance from Long Island University, Brooklyn campus, Mr. Waterman began working in arts institutions such as the Brooklyn Arts Exchange and the Abundance Dance Academy of the Arts, which is run by Ms. Charisma J, another force of nature. He is currently in an after school program coordinator at 92nd Street Y. So this might be a little out of date because this was from last year, actually. So he might have to update us on some of this stuff. But just reading from what we spoke about last year. Um, and he is a writer for Black Dance Magazine. Hopefully he is still doing that. He plans to use his value of spiritual consciousness to establish a future that encourages us to become the best versions of ourselves. And watching him work this year, he is doing that. He is absolutely doing that. So let me go find Mr. Maxwell Waterman and bring him on. Because you guys have no idea how much I needed this today. And I'm so excited to talk to him. <laughs> Wait, y'all. <laughs> Come on, Maxwell. Oh, did it work? Oh. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. How you doing? I have been looking forward to this all day. Yes. Let me take off my glasses so I can see you. Because I feel like sometimes <laughs> I hide behind my glasses. It's been, well, it hasn't been that long because we saw each other at um opening night at Graham. Yes. 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 Oh, that was fantastic. Wasn't that a great was show? It. Say it again. Wasn't that a great show? Oh, yes, especially to see um, Leslie open up uh, um, for Chronicle. Just mm, shout outs to Leslie Andrea Williams. She she did that. She she did that. And honestly, that was my first time seeing a Black woman in that role. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How powerful it is because, you know, Chronicle also talks about war, um, particularly Graham's feelings about war and how timely that is with the war with Russia and Ukraine and also the war that we personally hold in ourselves to diversify spaces. So to yeah. see Leslie in that role, yes. take into consideration everything else, it really did leave a powerful message in the hearts right. of the audience. Yeah, exactly. It was it was super powerful. The imagery, of course, her dancing and yeah. to see the work standing the test of time. 90, 90 years, I think the work is about 90 years old. Just about, yeah. Just about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then the very next day, because that was the same, the next day, Katanji Brown Jackson was confirmed. Oh, yes, was, yes. So it was just, it was so much going on that week. It was so powerful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how are you, my love? What is going on? You got so much going on. I love <laughs> I am just, um, I'm just feeling blessed. Uh, these past couple of weeks have been difficult. Um, you know, just the other day I was followed to the train station. Um, and I'm grateful for Torch Dance Theater Company members for protecting me. And, you know, um, last week I witnessed uh, some tragic violence um, between students and my school outside of my... No! So it's it's been a lot, but I'm so grateful that I've just held on to my spiritual maintenance plan and adjusted it for what I've needed to be. And speaking of Mother's Day, shout outs to my mom for just being the force that she has been in my life um, and always reminding me the power of faith, the yes. power of just standing on your own two feet and on those knees and clasping those hands and just really um, attuning, mm -hmm. aligning. Yeah, because, you know, things are going to come your way and it's just meant to test you yeah. in 
if you really believe what you believe in. And even this moment right here, right? Like, I'm so grateful for you as a powerful woman, as a powerful mother yourself. Aww, like, okay. you are mothering all of us, particularly the young artists, in what is possible. So mm. um, I'm just blessed. I, I really am blessed. And I believe that there are angels around me that are rooting for me, whether mm -hmm. I can see them or not see them, mm -hmm. I know that they are here. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's how I'm That's feeling. so true. And I'm so sorry you had that experience with the person following you, um, because I had a similar experience a few weeks ago, mm. just going to the gym, broad daylight, and this, this uh, visibly homeless or man, uh, decided to follow me on the street. So I had to do a little U-turn mm -hmm. and, and run up into a, a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And luckily the, um, the security guard was standing right at the door. And in that split second that I had to ask him, please help me, he's following me. Yeah. Um, and he held him out, you know, out of the door, out, out of the store. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the person is still in my neighborhood. And in fact, Mm -hmm. I was going to a show last week, mm -hmm. and I was heading for the subway. It was like 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, so it was light out. Um, and an altercation had broken out on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And so I went to go step away from it to maybe cross the street, saw yeah. the same person that had followed me. Mm -hmm. He starts following me again. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, come on. And right. so I hot-footed it you know, to the nearest um, entrance to the subway where I knew there were, it was like a police police car. Was, but anyway, just, just to say, we have got to keep, you know, the faith, keep our eyes open for each other. Yes, 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 yes. You know? And, you know, <laughs> like I told my um, students that I taught at NYU today, you know, each of us is a house of gold. And mm -hmm. we have gold in your house, your house shines brightly and it's going to attract so many things. And when you have encounters like that, you have to be reminded that, you know what? Um, I have a divine right to protect my house. So mm -hmm. the fact that you were able to be so consciously aware to say, you know what? I need help. That's beautiful. Because, you know, as African-Americans, we don't ask for help. <laughs> True, right. So, so for you to use your voice in that mm -hmm. moment to intervene for your own self, mm -hmm. it lets your little girl on the inside of you know that Danny could take care of Danny mm -hmm. and that the people around you, whether they know you personally or not, are willing to take care of you. Mm -hmm. so that, Because that's, you know, that's a lot. And it's funny lot. that you mentioned this too, because again, I do believe the universe will test us. Right before I was followed, I told my students, you know, always believe that things are protecting you. Mm -hmm. you know? And then in the universe, I like to be, was like, okay, so let me send you something so you actually believe that. And I believe that happens for us time to time. Because, you know, sometimes yeah. we talk the talk. But when mm -hmm. it comes to walking the walk, we shy away. So as soon as it happened, even though I was afraid, I said, oh, okay. All right, universe. You testing me just to make sure that you know that I believe what I already know. I so we're going to have <laughs> right. I'm glad that you are safe. I'm yes. glad safe. And you too. So what, what was what was the outcome of your situation? Did he follow you to the school? Um, what so what happened was that actually I was crossing the street from my school. And, you know, it's a very, that, that area, even though it's gentrified, it still does bring a lot of um, negative attention to it. Um, but when I looked behind me the first time, I just saw, you know, another guy um, minding his business working out. So I get to the middle of the highway because um, there's there's three pavements. There's the one by the school, one in the middle of the highway, and the other one across the street. So I get mm -hmm. to the middle of the highway, and I look behind me, and out of nowhere, I just see this guy walking towards me. And just the energy in that moment felt invasive. Mm. Um, so right when he got to me, he planted himself next to me, and I quickly shifted over. And... The light happened at that moment to turn white. So I crossed the street and um, I had a little pause. I don't know why I paused, but he began to talk to me and say, oh, you know, um, you moved away from me like I was going to touch you. And then um, I said, well, you know, this is a very dangerous area and I have to be careful. And I said, goodbye. And <laughs> I started walking and 
as the universe would have it, I saw another powerful black woman in front of me. She was getting in her car and spirit said, walk towards this woman. Mm. I began to walk towards her and she looked at me and she um, had closed her car door, but she kept her eyes on me because she was already on route somewhere. Um, but then he began to back away. And I think maybe, I don't know, he was trying to hit on me. I, I don't know what it was, but he just be, because he, he, oh, I remember him saying, oh, oh, I guess that's your man or something, something uh, uh, like that he said. So mm. he left. So I crossed the street again and I walked in front of um this hotel, which was widely populated. And I could just see him in my peripheral. And I said, okay, maybe he's, you know, walking the same route as me. But mm. um, I knew he was following me when I got to the next corner to go in the train station, I saw his steps. So I booked it to the train <laughs> and um, I, you know, texted um, our Torch Dance Theater um, group chat to find out because I was on our way to rehearsal at Martha Graham. So I said, you know, are any of y'all in the area? I believe I'm being followed. And I was uh -huh. really petrified because the train station that I go into, um, there are two entrances. I know my entrance. I don't know where the other entrance is, but I do know when I walk into the train station, the other entrance cuts in front of my entrance. So I wasn't sure if he was going to go around and meet mm. me. Um, but by the grace of the universe, he was nowhere in sight once I got on the train. Um, so yeah, uh, I am, I'm grateful. I'm very, very, yeah. but best believe though, <laughs> you know, one against one. <laughs> well, you know, it's so crazy because I have this bracelet. I've got to see this, right? Oh, I've had this beautiful. bracelet since 1996. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy metal turquoise, but it's heavy. And it actually used to have a little class week open it up. I had it, it broke, but I had to solder sh shut. So I just I just slide it on now. Mm -hmm. But I got it actually in, in, in Cairo, Egypt. Okay. On my last tour with Alvin Ailey, I got this bracelet in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so at nighttime sometimes, if I'm not feeling comfortable, even whenever, right. I put it across my knuckles, because guess what? <laughs> That's you know? right. You got to think about what you can do. And another friend of mine uh, smartly said to me, if you're going home late, you're not feeling safe or whatever, smart thing to do. If you see like a little bodega or 7-Eleven or whatever, mm -hmm. get a, a cup of hot coffee. Mm. Then you maybe just toss it in the face and, and get away. Right. And thought of that. So these are just, I mean, it's sad that we have to think of these things, of yeah. course, but it's real. Yeah. Right? It's similar to you. Mine happened in broad daylight. I mean, I left the school um, 4.30. Sun was still out. Sun yeah. Was still out, you know? So... Yeah, but glad to be here. Glad and we to be here. Too. So, yeah, enough scary talk. I'm just glad you're okay. Yeah, you too. I have been so excited to catch back up with you because since we talked, um, you've done a TED Talk, you started your dance company, and you got some recent news at NYU. So let's start, though, with the, um, the, the TED Talk. I want to hear about your TED Talk. I mean, I'll watch it, but I want you to tell folks about it. Oh my goodness, of course. So the TED Talk, which is titled Mask, which stands for Making All Things Seem Candid, was actually videotaped at Macaulay Honors College, um, right actually by Lincoln Center. Okay. Uh, I believe that was taped November 12th and released mm -hmm. on November 14th. And mm -hmm. that for me was just a healing moment in my mm -hmm. career. Um, now, how did it come about? Who invited you or how did they how did you course. get the radar? Yes. So um how it came about is that um I had seen an invitation to do it during the pandemic and I said, Oh, you know, well, I've got something to say. I've got a story to share, so I'll apply. And then through the grapevine, they somehow got in contact with one of my professors from the Arnhold Graduate Dance Education Program. Shout outs to Miss Celia Epiotis, who is yeah. a who well, I just met online for the first time. But I'm yes. Like, yes. Yes. Amazing. And um, they reached out to her. I don't know how they found her. And she, you know, backed me up. Um, especially um, also, she was one of the first people when I began to build my social emotional learning curriculum, which is not Graham. You know, she said, yes, like he can really um, amplify the topic mm -hmm. of what it means to, you know, um, share a story um, from trial to triumph. Mm. Yeah, um, that happened. I didn't know about it because once I applied, I left it alone. And then in August of 2021, they reached out to me and said, listen, we 
love what you're doing. We want to hear from you. And yeah, I was working from them since working with them, sorry, since September on, you know, drafting my speech. And even that was um, healing for me because, mm -hmm. you know, the title of the TED Talk is Mask. And I realized that even as I was writing the speech, I myself was writing from a mask, mm. you know? Um, and the um, young lady who was uh, the head of the writing team, um, shout outs to Maya, she was saying, you know, Maxwell, I feel like you're not being honest. And I said, you sure? And she's like, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> he was right, you know, yeah. because in our industry, because, you know, in the TED Talk, I share my own personal experience with molestation and then I connect mm -hmm. it to how sometimes our dance industry um, causes us to silence our voices, which causes us to wear a mask in so many different ways, shapes, or forms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was this fear on me when I was writing that, oh, well, I don't want anybody to cancel me. I don't want anybody mm -hmm. to you know, um, not hire me and, you know, all the negative self-talk. But I said, but my spirit right? The vehicle which lives inside of my body that causes me to do what I do every day. My spirit tells me to be honest because when I'm mm -hmm. honest, honestly leads to healing. And when honesty leads to healing, then after that, we have such a more edifying community, which is what we're yes. all about, right? So I had to really do my own self-work and say, you know what? You know, universe, Lord, because I'm a preacher kid, uh, whatever mm -hmm. comes from this, you know, I know that all things work together for good. And if I touch one person, then, you know, well done, servant. So um, after two drafts, <laughs> final draft, I came strong. I said, okay, here it is. And they said, now that's your story. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was Thank brilliant. you. I need to actually, when, I'm, when we're done here, I got to make sure I link it in my bio so people can see it. I mean, I know yeah. you have it linked and it's on, it's on YouTube, the TED Talks. But I yes. want to make sure I get so people can see it from this as well. No, thank you so much. And it's also on the official um, TEDx website. So I can also give you that link. And yes. yeah, one of the most um, just healing experiences ever. Um, because, you know, my molestation, I that's a story that I've kept quiet for. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, too, you know, again, being in the dance industry and wondering, like, is somebody going to cancel me and, and whatnot? You know, there as confident as I preach, you know, I was still um, not being cohesive with my own mm -hmm. truth. So I got up on, once I, you know, finished the draft and I got up on that stage and I you said what I said, literally just this weight fell off of me. And it was so um, self-affirming for the Dean of McCall. Yes. Um, she was watching the speech and she came up to me. She gave me a hug and she said, thank you. She said, you yes. don't know how many people you just touch. And she said, watch. So, yeah. Um, thank you for, you know, honoring it. And I hope more people um, watch it because, you know, Danny, there's certain things that the body alone through dance cannot express. Dance is a beautiful expression, but sometimes... Mm -hmm. We just need that larynx muscle to work and for our words, you know, yes. um, be heard and to affirm us. And mm -hmm. I do know this because somewhere along the line, someone taught you how to use your voice, which is why you can go on stage and curate performances and even have this platform for people and yourself to share your stories. And I just mm -hmm. really want everyone to know that if we really want to build, and I should say rebuild, our creative economy, we have to make room for people to share. Mm -hmm. You know, even Ailey's documentary, I think about oh. this moment because I wonder, had someone or something given him the opportunity to share his voice, not his artistic voice, but that little boy on the inside that was crying out, maybe he would still be with us. I know. Yeah, because he held so many things on the inside. And that's because, you know, well, I'm a black man. And, you know, right. what are the expectations of a black man in this time period? But I'm sure if he was able to say, hey, I, I, I like same sex or hey, you know, I want to choreograph something different than what you're putting the demands on me for. Maybe he would have felt more loved, more mm -hmm. secure, you know, more him, 
not him mm -hmm. the baby, but him as him right because at the end of the day he's still a person yeah blood memories that every yes. day remember you know so all that to say you know we always tell the students you know investigate your craft more but we have to understand in them going deeper in the investigation of their craft you also have to make room for them to express and feel what it means to speak and to be heard. Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what we did today, y'all. So I'm so glad you say all that because when you shared that clip from the last time we spoke, yes, <laughs> I'm going to throw my shoe again where you said, where is it? How can you get in line? Get, get, what did you say? Okay. How can you hit the line if you're not even aligned yourself? <laughs> That's <laughs> it's, so, it's so true. It's so true. Even it's so true. My students at NYU, I'm like, you know, and actually, um, I had a beautiful conversation with Irene Dowd, who's like Miss Anatomy. Love her. Um, she's at the Juilliard. Um, she's my mentor now. And I'm saying, you know, in order to execute physical anatomy, right um or and or physical technique your spiritual anatomy has to be together right because if you're not in a place where your nervous system mm -hmm. right is present in order mm -hmm. for you to receive information then how can you actually perform what you're being asked and again you know this i'm sure when you were performing cry before mm -hmm. you went on stage and even the weeks leading up to the um performance of cry you did something to center yourself you did mm -hmm. something to say you know i'm enough and you know because it's a piece about mothers i've got my mama with me you know yeah. especially you know knowing what your mama went through with cancer i've got my mama with me and once you grounded yourself in your spiritual anatomy you were then able to go on stage and execute and mm -hmm. then led to the healing of other people's spiritual anatomy so then they can go on and execute and do the same thing that you're doing and more that's mm -hmm. how it works yeah, yeah. That's how it works. It yeah. is. And, you know, I was on this beautiful call. I'm in this um, this group called Black Diaspora, and we are presenters as curators in this group and dance artists and educators. And just being in this Zoom room of women and talking about, you know, um, who do we lean on when we're stressed and we're troubled? Because even as a presenter, I have to be in alignment with what is true to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously... It, you know, Summer Stage is a beast and we have a very broad audience and I have to be really thoughtful though, even though I am, I'm presenting for a broad audience, what I want to show that audience, Yes. you know? And so last night I literally could not sleep because I started drinking coffee right now at 5.27 <laughs> because I was up all night having an, uh, worrying about this issue with a, an international company I'm bringing and the paperwork and, and, you know, the visa was going to be delayed and, and all this stuff. And I don't have any money. And so, you know, I had a nice conversation with the, the group's tour manager today. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? We're going to figure it out. Yes. Like, I, like, it's going to happen. Like, we're going to mm -hmm. figure it out. We're going to work together. Mm -hmm. And we're going to figure it out. Right. And so literally right before I signed off everything so I can get ready for this, mm -hmm. I got an email from our uh, visa lawyer to say the petition was approved. Nice. <laughs> nice. I was like, hallelujah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I did not sleep last night thinking about this. And so just, you know, just being centered and focused. And we were talking about that today in the group where, yes, we were about the artists. And of course, our, well, I'm very artist first because I am an artist. Right. But it's also the presenters and what we go through and and how we're viewed and what we're putting out there and okay. all these things. And so, but also too, not worrying so much about what the outside, what, what the outside influences are, yes. you know, being settled within yourself to know that, you know, I'm making the right decision for myself. Yes. And you got to know that you've got to yeah. know that every morning when I wake up, and I need to do better, but every morning when I wake up, I look in my mirror right over there and I tell myself, Maxwell, you are enough. Yes. And all things are working together for you. Mm. Whether you have a moment that makes you believe that it's otherwise, no. 
that all things are working together for you. And it's that self-confidence that leads to so much success. Mm -hmm. yeah? So proud of you for understanding the importance of your decisions because you know i always tell my students you know and you know the students talk and they say oh how many bodies you slept with and all this kind of conversation they have nowadays these young people and i told them the other day i said well listen i said with all those bodies y'all talk about y'all sleep with there's one person that you're gonna always have to sleep with and that's your conscience <laughs> yeah your conscience and if you don't listen to that conscience, yeah. which is always um, your compass for your spiritual code, you're going to fail. Yeah? yeah, all the success that we see in life is, is not um, external. It comes from an internal place. You have to be so in alignment with who you are mm -hmm. to be able to recognize, okay, this thing is for me. Oh, this thing is not for me. Oh, this thing, mm, maybe not for me. Oh, this thing is for you. So yeah. how, ooh, that. You, you're mastering that. Yes. How, doing that. Yes. Yes. All, everything about that. And that's also to, and again, work in progress, right? Yeah. I'm a work in progress. I mean, I will all, we, we'll all, if we care, you know, about growing will be work in progress is works in progress for the rest of our lives but uh but these are some of the things that i also try to tell you know young young people that i mentor and i'm actually in two two mentor groups now where i'm the mentor nice but and i feel like I, i'm learning so much it's, it's such a beautiful exchange of ideas between myself and these young women that i'm mentoring and it's wonderful mm -hmm. you know they're teaching me so they're teaching me a lot <laughs> agency actually mm. because this generation you know they're like uh-uh we ain't doing that you know and sometimes to their detriment but for the most part they they stand up for themselves in a way i don't think my generation did you know i mean i'm 53 so one of the mentees that i have is uh 24 25 maybe so she actually could be my daughter um but she was like, yeah, I left that job. And now I'm working at da-da-da-da-da. And it's worked out. And boo 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 I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just, it's just brilliant to see see the... And I know there are some people out here that be like, oh, young people, they need to get it together. They, they, they have it together. That's the problem. And I'm so glad that you brought this up. Oh, my fire is up. I, I encourage all of my colleagues, um, whether they're not watching, soon to watch, and those who are watching, the young people, from, from, from the mouths of babes come great knowledge. And the mm. young people are our successors. And we, just as when we were young and we wanted someone to listen to our insight, we have to be able to be encouraged from mm. ourselves first to listen to them. Because you are absolutely correct. They have, especially now that they've been in a pandemic, They've seen so many social justice movements and now, you know, they're more mature. Mm -hmm. They have uh, an insight. Um, they have a perspective that, like you said, that we didn't have growing up because of the times. And, you know, just to share a little story with you um, relating to what you said um, with the young lady, when I first um, got to my school in Brooklyn, I want to say with the yeah with the first within the first month couple of weeks, um, this freshman had called me a faggot, <clears throat> and I paid it no mind. I'm like mm. that doesn't hurt me, um, but it did a little bit. But I'm like you know mm -hmm. I'm a used to it, right? I I've I've I'm, I've I've in an unhealthy way desensitized myself to it. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my juniors heard, and she's like my secretary, <laughs> and she I heard this loud knock at my door. And I said, who's knocking on my door like that? So I opened up the door and it's her. Miss Johnson is her name. And I said, Miss Johnson, what's going on? She said, Mr. Waterman, where is he? And I said, what are you talking about? She's like, I heard what happened. Where is he? And mm -hmm. I said, you're not going to find that boy. <laughs> and she said, but Mr. Waterman, you always telling us about respect. So why are you allowing somebody to disrespect? And I said, you know what? I said, well, universe. And <laughs> it's so funny. By the end of the day, that young man came running to me and apologized. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so they, they somehow got to him and so, so vain. But, yeah, you know, and I remember you telling me this story the last time. And I'm so yeah. glad you said it again because you're right. You know, having that 
self-respect for ourselves, but they're really putting it into action. Yeah. And then showing others how to have respect for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. It's so important. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't blame her. I said, well, you know, that's what I preach. And I was being put into practice, you know? So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like everything else. It's like with work. It's like with... um. You know, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm the advocate for downtime. I am so, because someone asked me, I hung out with someone recently, and you know, of course with social media, you look busier than you are. Right. Folks, I do not go out every night. I really do not. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't take it if I did. <laughs> and a friend of mine who had just only recently started following me on Instagram or whatever, she was like, when do you take downtime? Like, when are you off? You know, when are you? I'm like, oh, I cherish my downtime. I don't answer emails on the weekends. I don't, I don't answer emails after six o'clock. Like, I'm very like, I mean, unless it's, you know, a personal email. That's, I have two emails. Mm -hmm. it's, there's two emails. <laughs> there's the work email and then there's the energy email. And so just even those small boundaries and especially in the pandemic, us working from home, you know, you're home. Yeah. You can be on the computer until 8, 9 o'clock at night. And it's like, mm, no. Yeah. 6 yeah. o'clock, close that screen, go do something you enjoy, you know, whatever that is. And we have a new uh, beautiful young intern. Uh, her name is Isa. She just started with us in, in February. Oh, nice. And 24, you know, eager to, like, you know, learn and, and you know, do a great job. I'm like, that's beautiful, and I like that. But, you know... The work day ends at six. Now, when we're in season, right. obviously that's a different, that's a different ball game. Right. Uh, things get a little, you know, b fuzzy. But right, right now, mm -mm. If yes. It's done by six, it'll get done tomorrow. <laughs> it really yeah. so, as a black woman, it's important that you rest because, you know, truth be told, and I know I may piss a lot, piss off a lot of people by saying this, but I'm in the business of pissing people off because <laughs> pissing people off leads to healing, right? Um, I believe that Black women carry the grunt of the world. You we know, do. The social totem pole, it goes white men, white women, Black men, then Black women, and then you have your LGBTQIA, and then so mm -hmm. there. And, you know, it's important that you rest. You know, studies show that Black women um, die at, you know, exponential rates every day, you know, because... Mm -hmm chronic stress issues. So it's important that you rest. And also too, because you have this gift, right? Of creating a platform for people to share their stories. If you don't rest, you're not in a position to be <laughs> healthy with, you know, um, amplifying your gifts. So rest mm -hmm. leads to your gift, which ultimately leads to your purpose. Rest. Yes. <laughs> yes you got to. <laughs> Where's my fan? <laughs> And I, I, I want to get back to some of your, your more current news, but um, I'm not sure if you, I think you did see that my entire, for the most part, my season for summer stage this summer is predominantly um, women of color dance leader. Congratulations to you. Yes, 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 yes. I was very, I was very intentional about that. Yes, yes. And so I just want to lift up and amplify women of color in the arts, mm -hmm. women of color dance leaders, whether they were the founder or, you know, the new artistic director or the co-artistic director, whatever it is. Like, you know, I started with Melissa Young from Dallas Black Dance. Yes, hi, Brooklyn. Going <laughs> all the way through to the end with Linda Denise Fisher Harrell with oh. Hubbard Street. Yes. I mean really proud really proud of how it came together and so mm -hmm. just i can't wait for folks to come out and help me support and uplift um these women and uh yeah it's gonna be great so tell me about this uh current news with nyu tish yes so i am currently a guest artist um with nyu tish dance and um i actually today um taught them a master horton class and um, hopefully they'll have me back. Um, it's part of a series called The Seventh Inning, where I believe, if I have it correct, um, after every seven weeks, they bring in a guest artist um, mm -hmm. to help, you know, enrich the artistry of the students. Uh, so, you know, I, I've been reaching out to a lot of people because, to be honest with you, Danny, I miss being in the conservatory space. Mm -hmm with the work that I do now in the public school system, as meaningful as it is, meaningful, um, sometimes it does not feel fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I find myself pouring out and not 
always receiving um, mm. back. But, you know, I'm grateful for it. I believe that I've been divinely assigned there. But I yeah. miss the work that I do in conservatory spaces, especially surrounding around racial equity and diversity mm. and, you know, decolonizing pedagogy and all those culturally responsive practices. So, yeah, I, I sent out some feelers and, you know, Pamela Pietro, Sean Curran, thank you all so much for loving on me and seeing <laughs> me, you know, particularly as a male of color, a gay male of color, gay male of color who is from a Barbadian woman and so much of my intersectionalities, you know, Pam saw me, Sean is on sabbatical right now. And she mm. said, your resume is impressive. I believe that you have something to offer. Come on in. We're welcoming Come on. You, you and know? You still teaching at Martha Graham? Um, yes, I'm still teaching at Graham, still directing the teens program and um, bringing Horton to the Graham School. Yes! Thank you so much to LaRue Allen, our executive yes! director. Also, you know, she's like, yes, we want you here. We want that Horton technique because Horton and Graham, it's it's a marriage. I mean, they're so similar. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, Um, back to NYU. Uh, yeah, we were planning what the class is going to be like and then today i i just showed up and had one of the most heartwarming experiences and for me again it's it's not only the technique but it's the truth yeah yes. pouring into the students and letting them know hey all of you are artists and that's yes. that's a practice that i always do i never call students students i always call them artists because earlier you said the magic word agency so mm -hmm. i want artists in the room to know that, hey, you are an artist. The reason why you're in this space is because the universe believed that you mm -hmm. have something to offer. So use that agency. And it's important that, you know, they know that because then, and you can attest to this too, when you get in the professional world, deeper in it, you begin to work with choreographers. There's a lot of independence that you have to have, right? When, uh, for right. Your friend, when you were being coached, right? For Cry mm -hmm. and all, all the other pieces that you did, you know, even at Philodenko, there's a demand that you need to have when you walk in the space and you start working with the rehearsal director. So mm -hmm. I always tell my students, my artists, sorry, prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. If you know that something now, building it in your practice now is going to help you later, don't wait until later to do it. Do it okay. now. So by the time you transition later, it feels like it's one with you. So I it left it there. <laughs> right. So I left the artist with that today. And I also told them, I said, listen, whatever you seek, you already are. As so many of us, we feel Where's my church fan. Where's my fan? <laughs> no, because hey. so many of us feel like, oh my goodness, like I want to be like that artist. You know, I want to go to the places that that artist has gone, you know, in total admiration. I'm just like, well, it's already happening for you because in order for you to recognize it, you can mm. only recognize something that's on the inside of you first. <laughs> you can only recognize something that's on the inside of you first. I'm like, every, so to take off that angst and that anxiety, I told them, everything you seek, you already are. And it's so a also way to your point, it takes, it takes off some of that, um, you know, I think, I mean, I've done it too. You know, you look at what somebody else has. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, I can never, I, I can never do that. Right. I can never be that rich. I can never be that skinny. I can never have, you know, multiple turns. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> I eat all these things, and it's like, and that to me sometimes, especially with social media, right? The trappings of social media and trying to get these kids to know that most of this stuff is curated. Oh, all of it is curated. Most, you know what I mean? Right, like, right. See what you? It's like back in the day, we had magazines, right? And pouring right. over these fashion magazines, like, oh, I never had that kind of skin. I never had, da, 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 da. Now it's social media, mm -hmm. you know, making making the kids insecure in, in their gifts. Yes, and I tell them too, social media is controlled content. People are only posting what they want you to see. Okay. And, you know, hey, social media people out there, you know, even though we have to validate ourselves, mm -hmm. for those of us on social media, myself and yourself included, how about us also? posting our process so yeah, right. people also understand what it takes to get there but yeah social media is controlled content and you know i tell them you got to believe in you first yeah hey, right even when you get the external validation yeah um it only can stick to you right if you already put it there first mm -hmm. nothing's gonna mm -hmm. stick to you, it's not inside of you first it's just right 
So right. yeah, it was such a wonderful experience um, with NYU, um, and I hope to be back. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I, I'm gonna so actually host the combination on Monday that I taught them. They were so oh, very cool. Yes. I love that. I mean, well, and speaking of real, like, so I put this T-shirt on because it has, like, you know, the ladies' hands and peace and love oh, and the straight sign. But then as I was, you know, getting it together, I was like, oh, I got a hole. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, hey, I didn't have enough time to go change. I was like, well, I don't have my hair covered. But I have a, see, y'all, this is real. I have a hole in my shirt. I don't even. And that, <laughs> and that's all good. And that's fine because, again, perfection is, is not real. Only being present is real. And that's Ooh, all we need to do. You know what? See? That's Ooh. what we need to do. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need this a whole, you need a whole, like, T-shirt slogan line of T-shirts <laughs> and things. Because I'm serious. You dropped so many on wonderful gems. Thank you. This is so inspiring. And I needed this today because I'm, I mean, we could talk more offline about this another time, but, you know, I'm going through some things. I'm going through a transition and, you know, wondering what's, what's out there in life for me, you know, yet to do, not left to do, but yet mm -hmm. to do. Yes. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited at the same time, nervous, and I want to try things. Like, even with my IG Live, I'm taking it in person. Yay! Oh, my God! <laughs> I would love to come in person. Oh, I will pull you up on oh that stage. But yeah, it's going to be July 1st. Um, so I settled on the date. Um, the venue is the Greenwich House Music School in the Village. So the West Village, easy to get to from everywhere. Yes. Um, my really dear friend, Rachel Black, who used to be the general manager at Summer Stage okay. Central Park. She is now the, uh, I think she's the executive director down there at the Greenwich House Music School. Anyhow, she... She's a wonderful human being. Um, and I just picked the phone and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing, but in person now. She was like, come on down, Danny G. Yes. So I'm still working on the guests. So more to come on that. But July 1st, save the date. Really excited. Um, oh, and back to Celia Ipiotis. So I was watching, she had uh, she was hosting a webinar in, in anniversary of her show, Dance yes. uh, dance on, I on Dance. I on Dance, yes. And I remember watching it years ago, just as a, you know, a growing artist and just like all these stories. I remember seeing the one she did on Alvin Ailey when they were doing The Magic of Catherine Dunham. Yes. And I remember being so struck by how, um, how, how he didn't look well. And sure enough, he, he passed away nine months later. But then she actually came to Philodenko and um, did a segment on us. And I guess it had to be late 89, um, early 90, 1990. Okay. Because we were doing this piece by Jean Hill Sagan called Sweet Agony. Mm -hmm. And Antonio Carlos Scott and I were partners then. Kim Beers was in this, is, in the, is in the excerpt. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually watching the webinar. It was uh, this past weekend. And when that clip came up, I was like, oh my god, right. So I typed into the chat. I wanted to be present in the room. You know, that's me. <laughs> And so she literally, I had never met her in person. I've never met her. She reached out to me the next day, I guess because she got my email from the registrations, and uh, said to me, I would love to speak to you. And I, if I could ask your help, identify some of the other people in the clip. Mm -hmm. But I just want to, you know, get to know who you are. And this is like the great, you know, Miss Thing. And so we talked the next day, and it was a beautiful conversation. We're going to meet for lunch. And... You know, if she can give me any guidance on taking this to the next level, I mean, yeah. I mean, she did it for how many years? Well, very well. Right. And her treasure, her treasure trove of um, guests and information and her wealth of knowledge uh, was, you know, top notch. So yeah, so I was really excited to talk to her. Mm -hmm. um, and more to come on that. But I also, before we run out of time, um, I want to hear about. First of all, congratulations on Torch. Yay! Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, Torch, dance, Who, dance, huh? Um, Kenya just joined. Hi, Kenya! That's my sister. She's the founder and artist director of Torch. So she yes! Hi, hey, Kenya! Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, tell me, tell us about, so you have an upcoming performance June 4th yes. at Perry Dance. Perry Dance, yes. That's your inaugural performance, so, right? Performance, yes. Congratulations. First of all, I know what it takes to get there, so... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And if we all watching, the link is in my bio. Get a ticket. I'll be there. Let's go. Let's go support Torch Dance Theater. <laughs> Perry Dance June 4. So tell us what we can expect. Oh my goodness. Well, you can expect all the things. <laughs> 
um, we are presenting five ballets that are based um, in a lot of personal work and a lot of historical work um, performed by 12 multi-ethnic um, artists who we're so grateful for. And really the works are purpose to help the audience um, go deeper in their intrapersonal reflection mm. um, and understand, you know, what it means to really um, be human. You know, what it really means to uplift humanity, which is something that we all need right now. You know, um, Kenny and I um, are always talking. And one thing I always say to her is like, you know, you would think that with the pandemic, people will be more compassionate. But people, you know, Ooh. unfortunately tend to be a bit more violent. So we really wanted um, to create an evening of work for everybody to exhale and say, ah. ah. You know, so that's what you um, can expect. Uh, there's going to be so much um, diverse movement vocabulary. Um, you're going to see one of my um, premier um, choreographic works called Unmasked. Okay. Which, um, you know, uh, sort of a derivative from my TEDx talk. And even for me, again, that was a healing experience because I always shy away from choreography. And, you know, Kenya, love you to death, my sister. She's like, you know, you've got something to say, not just in in the voice but in movement you know go ahead and choreograph that and um yeah you know in that in that piece i'm um i'm merging you know psychology and mm. movement and you know what it means to merge that together emerge that together you know uh, a little martha graham myself if you will so <laughs> yes it's gonna be really really exciting yeah we're gonna have a q a afterwards oh great from us to the artists and then from the audience to all of us. Uh, it's gonna really be um, something. And you know, Kenny and I, uh, our core value at the heart of Torch, you know, um, is community engagement. So we really are developing the space to feel like family. Yeah. Yes. Um, as well as teaching our roots and capturing history, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's what you can expect. You know. <laughs> now, are you dancing? Uh, I will not be dancing <gasps> this at this performance, but okay. within the upcoming season, you will see me shake a tail feather. Yes, get the leg up, all that stuff. <laughs> I still got it. ACI I know you do. I still got it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And so... In, at, at Capizio, is it in the main theater or? Yes, it's in the KNJ Theater. Um, hmm. Yeah, the KNJ okay. Theater. Yes, yeah, so we're um, 140 seats. Um, tickets are going fast. So please, if you haven't gotten your ticket already, get it. Like, it's it's going to be something to remember. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, congratulations. And there's um, there's a student discount, right? For, for yes. You might want to come. Yes. So and for students who want to come, all they have to do is email um, Torch Dance Theater, um, and the discount will be $15 um, for them via our PayPal. So when they email mm -hmm. us, they have to show us proof of their student ID, because, you know, anybody could say they got student ID. Okay. Right? So they got to show us proof of student ID, and then yeah. once we confirm it, they can send $15 to PayPal, and then we'll have them on the list. Yes. Okay. And is that information on your page as well, that your email mm -hmm. to the... Link. Yes, yes, it's and it's um it's within the caption of um that has the the flyer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right. Okay, very cool, very cool. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited for you. You got so much going Thank on. You. It's fabulous. Thank you. Listen, I'm I'm grateful. Um, thank first of all, thank you for always supporting Torch. Um, we truly appreciate you, and yes. you know, I'm I'm blessed to have these things because if I didn't, I don't know if I would have my um my spiritual oxygen. So it um. <laughs> It really mm -hmm. helped to shine my light um, in an in an unmasked way. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so what are you getting into this weekend? This weekend, um, well, I'm going to see Doctor Strange tomorrow with my partner. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Nesby Crew. Um, he was the chair um back in City College of the National Society of Black Engineers. So we're going. Mm his friends to see Dr. Strange. And then on Monday, sorry, Monday, Sunday, him and I are um, taking mommy, you know, our matriarch um, to BBQ. She loves BBQ. <laughs> she, loves a, she loves a Bahama mama and she loves her sticky wings. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, BBQ! Yes. 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 Y
Yes, that's that's listen, listen. that's her spot. I that's her spot. I... <laughs> that is her spot. Listen, the other day I told her actually. Um, so we live in Yonkers, so we hang out um, by Inwood. Uh, so we actually went to the BBQs by 168th. I didn't tell. Oh, that's not my house. Oh, really? Okay, so we got to meet up one day. So I went over there, and um, I didn't tell her. And then, you know, she calls us every night, check in. And she, she's like, so where y'all been? And I said, oh, well, you know, we went to BBQs. And I actually, I had the Bahama Mama and the Sticky Wings and the Hennessy Wings. And she, um, she got silent. I said, Mom, you there? She's like, you know, I should hang up on you right now. And she's like, I don't want to talk to you. Let me talk to Neville. Neville's my partner's name. I want to talk to Neville. I want to talk to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Yeah, so we're going to take her out this Sunday. What are you doing um, this Sunday with, um, with Mom? So, yeah, I'm actually staying home okay. um, here in uh, New York. But I actually, I was home two weeks ago. Um, I was celebrating. So my niece, Madison, my youngest niece, yes. she's next week um her master's program in social work so i had some time to like, down to take her out for like a little bit pre-celebration nice. and then and my mom as well so it was kind of like a combo celebration uh early mother's day brunch and celebration and the next week i'm going back down for um the actual graduation so i had to break it up but i am sending her flowers and she doesn't watch this so she I won't ruin this prize, but uh, make sure she's getting some flowers um, Sunday oh, morning. Yeah, of course. That's beautiful. And congratulations, Madison. That is such a honor. And what in the deg degree is a master's in? Social work. Social work. Oh, yes. Uh, we need yeah. more color in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really? Exactly. Oh, uh, love exactly. it. Oh, you just inspired by it. Yeah, she, uh, you know, she's really just concerned about, you know, the mental mental health for for people of color and really she's such an empath and so she's she's a beautiful spirit and i'm just so proud of her and she actually was she did like she just pushed through um she only just graduated her undergrad like two years ago wow. and already you know getting her master's done done and done and then she takes a little bit of time off before she forges ahead and tries to get a placement somewhere yeah, yeah. so I'm really proud of her but yeah. yeah so i'll be i'll be around i'm actually going to a show Tonight, um, John Lehrer Dance Company at John Jay. Mm. Oh, and then tomorrow night, I'm actually going to um, the Magic Johnson. I haven't been to the Magic Johnson Theater in Harlem in forever. Yeah, me but, now. Um, Gabri Krista, the choreographer and filmmaker Gabri Krista, is showing her documentary or short film, uh, Sheila, about uh, Sheila Rohan from Dance of Harlem. Tomorrow oh, night. Oh. So I'm that. So I'm like, I'll be out and about doing stuff. But nice. yeah. Speaking of shows, did you catch Camille Brown's For Color Girls on Broadway? I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm actually looking for her to come into the screen. So I haven't yet. I'm going oh. on the 18th. And uh, one, of the, one of the artists reached out to me to... Because I amplified it when it first opened. Yeah. And then the... You know, this week it came out that they might have to close early, which is, mm. you know, disappointing, I'm sure, for everyone involved. Yeah. So I was going to see if I could find her these last couple of minutes because she wanted to come on and just give a plug for the show. I'm going to do it anyway, whether I can find her or not. Yeah. And show some love for this, for this show. It's so important. And in fact, one of the books on my list to read, and oh, after I finish this next one, about Serena Williams, is um, Ntozake Shange's Dance We Do. Oh, oh, oh no! Are you kidding me? Yep. Are you kidding me? Right next to you? Right next to me. I can't. Right I... next. So let me tell you. Ooh. My mom, and then I'll connect it to this. My mom gave me for Colored Girls um, when I was in middle school. And the reason why she did that is because in, at my middle school, shout outs to IS-285, the My 11 School of Performing Arts in Brooklyn, um, yeah. the teachers were so progressive um, in us as young students knowing um, and embracing our African-American history. So we were watching Roots, we were watching Amistad, um, so many different, you know, um, documentaries of, surrounded around Blackness. And my mother happened to be reading for Colored Girls at the time and she gave it to me and she said listen i want you to read this you may not understand some things but i think it'll be something that will you know bless you later down the line and oh, yeah. you know tyler perry came out with this movie and i was mm -hmm. able to connect and you know 
right before this um, Broadway show happened, um, actually, um, a good friend of mine, um, Deva Law Ferrone, oh, yeah. used to dance for um, Stephen Petronio. Um, I was one of her... Um, I was co-teaching with her at Conservatory of Dance at Purchase College, and she had recommended this book to me um, when we had a conversation one day. So I've been reading it um, and falling in love with how, you know, Dr. Shange, you know, uses um, dance in her own life. So when I saw Camille Brown on April 2nd, everything just came together ah. moment, you know? And so I, I know you would love it. And if I could, you know, help to add an extra plug, it is a must see yeah you'll definitely experience healing you'll experience you know joy sorrow you know energy it is she has done such an amazing job um with just building these characters and also connecting it to today so yes, yes i i for color girls for yeah. color I still can't believe this happened, though. I still, th That was a moment, y'all. That was a moment. That was... This is so meant to be. Oh, yep. I adore you. I adore you, too. <laughs> if I don't see you before then, you will definitely see my face on June 4th. But I feel like with all the dance that's happening in person now, we'll see each other on these streets somehow, somewhere soon. If not at BBQ sooner. Right. Let's go to BBQ. Just text me. And yes. see if I'm home, because I might meet you for those, some of them sticky wings. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I love you. I adore I you. Love I you too. You, and I'm proud of you. And oh, thank you, on too. shining your light. And whenever you're ready to have a sit down one to one, we're going to divine, we're going to fellowship, we're going to heal, we're going to do all the things. Because yes. you're of all yes. the things you give, you need it poured back into you. So, mm. I say. Thank you, Maxwell. Of course, my love. Have a I'll great weekend. Love to your mom. You too. Bye, love. Bye. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Just amazing, right? I mean, did, did y'all see that happen? Did y'all see that? That was incredible. So that was Maxwell Waterman. And again, the link to his show with Torch Dance Theater, their inaugural season, is in my bio. Please support um, get a ticket and just spread the word. And I'm going to go now and see if uh, Tendai is watching. Um, she was going to join me here at 6 p.m. to just give a little love and shout out to For Color Girls. I don't see her. Um, I'm going to give a few more minutes. But in just in case, guys, just so you know, For Color Girls is on Broadway at the moment at the Booth Theater where it opened 50 years ago. And... Um, it just opened uh, a few weeks ago, and for who knows what reason, sales, ticket sales, whatever, um, it's, you know, the news came out that it may have to close on May 22nd, which is only a very short run and not what anyone wants to hear. And so it got brilliant reviews in the New York Times. Everyone that, that I know who has seen has loved it. I'm going on May 18th. I know that artwork. Thanks, hey, say it. My fellow Zanko brother. Um, but yes, so I'm just trying to do what I can to, again, amplify this show and the artists that have worked so hard to bring this amazing work to Broadway. I did see it a few years ago at the public, and I am just was so thrilled to know that it was moving to Broadway with Camille at the helm. And so the, um, the young sister that reached out to me uh, yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, um, is Tendai, honey, yes! asking me if she could just come on for a few seconds or if I could just amplify the show some more and just give it some love. And I actually know Tendayu when she, uh, I worked with Urban Bush Women back in, I think it was 2014, she was in Urban Bush Women and was a brilliant member of their company then. She has since gone on to have her own um, collaboration with her partner. And I believe the name of it is, um, I can't find it. Oh, it's called um, You Fly Mothership with her partner, Greg Purnell. She was also in American Utopia on Broadway with David Byrne from Talking Heads and most recently, obviously now with the Color Girls on Broadway. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds to see if she pops on. Um, let me just see if I can maybe I can send the chat to her. And uh, Tendai. Um, and I'll give it, just give it a few more seconds. But in the meantime, <laughs> if you guys have any questions, what else can I tell you about? Um, so again, as you know, Summer State announced their season. I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you guys out in the park. 
Um, there's another scene from For Color Girls. That's her right there in the middle in the brown. So, you know, if you can, go see it. Buy a ticket. Tell your friends. Spread the word. You know, show some love to this amazing, amazing work of art. Choreo poem by Dr. Intozaki Shange. Um, yes. So that's really all I have. Oh, actually, going back to my brother, Matt Maxwell. How great is he? <laughs> that was him when he... Um, uh, recorded his TED talk um, and uh, just brilliant. I will find the link, also put that in my link tree so you guys can watch his uh, his talk. It was brilliant and really moving. Um, he just has so much to say, just a beautiful, beautiful spirit. And again, that's the poster for his upcoming show. And hey, Don, how are you? I need to get you on for, for a live, Don. Yes. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have. I am going to have to sign out soon because I need to get downtown <laughs> to see some more dance and some more dance and some more dance. Um, but yes, so have a wonderful weekend. And uh, listen, again, stay safe in these streets. You know, do what you can to stay safe. Wear your masks. Do what you have to do. Um, and uh, support the arts. Support what you can where you can how you can. Happy Mother's Day and much love to you. Next week, I will actually be traveling to Philly, so I don't think I'm going to do a live next next Friday. But maybe I'll just pop in just to say hi from, from Philly. <laughs> I'll be traveling to Philly at that point. So, um, yes, Zane, I'll be in Philly next weekend, so maybe we can get together. Okay. Um, but that's it. So, again, support for Color Girls if you can. If you can make it to the theater to show, you know, the 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 whoever those above that you know this show does not cannot close like this um that they want to do their full run and we that we support it and so i mean there were some nominations that just came out for it was uh gosh the out of out of critics circle the drama league and it picked up three nominations each two one of each you know for camille brown um you know, so we, I definitely want to make sure I do my part in helping to amplify, you know, the show so we can keep it on Broadway. So for colored girls who have tried suicide when the rainbow is not enough, and also please support my guest today, Maxwell Louis Waterman, um, and his upcoming concert at Perry Dance with his company Torch Dance Theater. So thanks for watching. Happy Friday. And I will hopefully see you for a little bit next week. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>